loved one is addicted to drugs, some families go to extraordinary lengths to save them. One Quad City's mother struggling to keep her family together as her daughter battles addiction. And as a last resort, she had her daughter committed. Thanks for being with us tonight. I'm Redrick Terry. And I'm Sharon Derick. TV6 Investigates has been following the family for weeks. Tonight, the team takes a look at the committal process and what happens when users literally lose control. A warning, this story describes suicide and substance abuse. Here's part two of Overdosed. Tabitha is addicted to painkillers that are sometimes laced with fentanyl, a drug law enforcement and medical experts call the most dangerous drug ever. Tabitha has overdosed several times, and during her last one, she could feel herself losing her will to live. I'm like, no, leave me alone. Like, I want this to happen. Tabitha's mom, Carly, has been in a nearly year-long battle to save her daughter. Tabitha has been in and out of treatment or detox at least seven times. Carly said she can't stand to watch her daughter slip away, or the pain from wondering if Tabitha is still alive. Where is she? Is she at a drug dealer's house somewhere? Is she safe? You know, is she overdosing? And that's why Carly is willing to do almost anything to stop Tabitha, even if that means having her committed. Committing someone isn't easy. It's only for life-threatening situations. It takes two witnesses to convince a judge who determines where the treatment is, and the sheriff's department has to track them down. Now, despite all these hurdles, the sheriff's department serves more than a 1,000 committals every year. Now they have hit rock, rock bottom, and they're thinking about suicide. They're thinking about the only way out of this addiction is to kill themselves. Most people go willingly, but others like Tabitha do not. She fought the deputies and had to be dragged off, kicking and screaming. So I wasn't processing it when they're like, we're taking I'm like, hey, no. And then they attacked me and like, I just like, yeah. No, I was like, this can't, if I don't get help and I'm still using, like, I'm going to have to be forced and then and then it's, I'm just going to keep going in a circle because I didn't do it for me. I did it because I was forced. Tabitha was taken to detox, but Carly said an error in the commitment process led to Tabitha's early release. Instead of winding up in a longer-term treatment facility, Tabitha was held in a hospital for a couple of days and let go. She immediately disappeared and went back to using. Carly says it's another sign of a broken system. You get into positions where you're forced in to getting committals. Um, which was a nightmare. That's probably been the worst thing. Well, that and thinking that my daughter's dead somewhere has been the worst part about this entire thing with her. Unable to find a rehab bed in the Quad Cities, Carly took Tabitha to a facility in Ottumwa. She stayed about two weeks, then left and disappeared again. Carly filed a missing person report on Friday. As of this report, Tabitha is still missing, and Carly's not sure how long to hold on. I want this to stop whether it means jail, rehab, or death. I want it to end. I, I, so when I say those things, I guess that's kind of like losing hope because I just want it to stop.